There's no example or authorization of instrumental music used in church worship anywhere in the New Testament. Likewise, for the first several centuries after the apostles of Jesus Christ died. Now, some of you may be upset with me and my new views. Like, why is Trinity Apologetics posting these things? Uh, what's up with this? This is legalistic. This is too far. Of course we can use musical instruments because the Psalms have musical instruments. But I believe the burden of proof is on you who desire to add musical instruments to new covenant worship, uh, you, you, you simply assume it very quickly, but have you tested it? Have you prayed about it? Have you considered the arguments for and against? Have you watched any debates or what, read any articles on the issue? Right? The burden of proof is on you because where does the New Testament show us any example, any authorization that God not only permits these musical instruments in new covenant worship, but authorizes and blesses them. The burden of proof is on you to prove that uh, these instrumental musics are not merely ceremonial, abrogated, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Now let's consider the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, right? I'm sure almost all of us love Charles Spurgeon, and if you read his devotionals, they are a massive blessing, right? You read his sermons, most especially, powerful, powerful stuff. Charles Spurgeon states that musical instruments were rejected and condemned by the whole army of Protestant divines. What a de de degradation to supplant the intelligent song of the whole congregation by the theatrical prettiness of a quartet. The refined niceties of a choir or the blowing off of wind from inanimate bellows and pipes, we might as well pray by machinery as praise by it. Adding an instrument to, to worship instead of pure spiritual new covenant worship is like adding a strange foreign random noise in the background that doesn't actually edify or create sincere saintly worship have you thought about that you add an organ or you add a piano guitar drums is this manipulation or is this a biblical new covenant authorized worship is this actual worship for a lifeless instrument a mechanical device or machinery to be added in or is it just creating a false aura even john wesley right, i'm not a fan of john wesley to be honest but even him and his methodist and wesleyan type church is recorded as saying i have no objection to musical uh, to instruments of music in our chapels provided they are neither heard nor seen so we have historical support both from the early ancient church and the early Protestant church, including Calvin and Knox. See my video, uh, A Brief History of Musical Instruments, that I posted just the other day, for the practice of a cappella. No example of instrumental music for church worship in the New Testament, and yet several examples, as we're going to see, uh, and commands of a cappella singing. So number one, Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody, salo, salo, psalming or music, stringing in your heart, music in your heart to the Lord. So it's heartfelt worship. It's from the heart. It's not with musical instruments. We sing and make melody in our hearts to the Lord, not making melody with our hands, physically, fleshly, carnally, in a certain sense. It's just spiritual. It's just from the heart. The parallel verse, Colossians 3.16, further illustrates a cappella, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. We sing with grace in our hearts. This is the authorized worship of praise and singing that we find in the New Testament. Singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord, not singing with instrumental accompaniment to the Lord. Number two, Matthew 26 verse 30, at the Lord's Supper, and when they had sung an hymn, that's one word in the Greek, verb hymned or having hymned, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So, in this sort of small church gathering around the table of the Lord, the disciples, of course, were gathering with the sacrament, and they worshipped with a song, they hymned to the Lord, 
it was a cappella psalm singing right scholars basically all agree that this was the halal for the passover the lord's supper here was in the context of the passover celebration they sang uh, psalms 113 to 118 or at least part of it the halal which is here is a cappella psalm singing this was jesus example it would be very difficult to imagine musical instruments being used in this setting few if any would try to make that claim especially in the upper room at night when the jews are searching for jesus to arrest him additionally to this we find paul and silas sang in prison acts 16 25 could only be a cappella number three james 5 13 we see a prayer and singing parallel is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms so singing our prayer and singing are paralleled in this verse godly prayer is from the heart and soul same with godly singing the vo the verse doesn't say is any merry let him play the harp let him pray play the guitar but to be merry and to sing in a way that pleases god must be spiritual and heartfelt musical instruments are unnecessary Worship is not about musical talent or ability, as if you depend on your own ability to play a music, musical instrument in order to sing praises or sing psalms. No, it's not about musical gifts and abilities, talents, or rehearsing. It is about singing from the heart with true faith, right? Making melody in your heart. That is the New Testament uh, pattern. 1 Corinthians 14. Paul said, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray, that he might interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. There's again here a parallel between prayer and singing, both without musical accompaniment but with simplicity and understanding i will sing with the spirit and understanding sounds like a cappella to me john chapter 4 23 and 24 but the hour cometh and now is when the when the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth right we simply worship god in spirit and in truth with the the soul and with the mind with understanding with with truth upon our lips we don't need musical instruments they are unnecessary to say the least and they're not authorized in the new testament first peter 2 5 ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ compare verse 9 about praises we offer spiritual sacrifices not physical sacrifices physical praise created by a physical instrument that creates artificial noise and sound in the middle of church and lastly number five perhaps the clearest example of them all hebrews thirteen fifteen. therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to god that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name we give thanks to his name by offering the sacrifice of praise to god that is the fruit of our lips the fruit of our lips the instrument that god himself has given us the voice the lips we sing from the heart of faith through to our mouth and lips the, the instruments that god himself has given us this is almost certainly a call for christians to sing simple a cappella praise from the natural musical instrument that god gave us with a spirit of thanksgiving rather than creating a false aura with lifeless soulless mindless mechanical devices a cappella is even more likely when we consider the audience the book of hebrews was written to the jewish synagogues were exclusively a cappella for many centuries and some synagogues would have converted to become christian churches these converted synagogues wouldn't suddenly become an orchestra or become filled with harps, sultries, tambourines, etc. that we find in new test uh, we find in temple service for the temple worship, the special kind of worship that happens 
three out of the 52 weeks in the year. It's not going to suddenly become these amazing experiences like the temple, but they will stay the same as a cappella, as pure and simple worship. The prayers, the, the preaching of the word, the reading of the word, the singing of psalms, a cappella, right? Ceremonial worship, including the sacrifices, were reserved for the altars and the temples, the temple. So the New Testament pattern is a cappella, heart and spirit worship, and never the old covenant types and shadows of instrumentals. With the regulative principle in mind, this fact alone forbids musical instruments in public worship. The New Testament only authorizes a cappella and never musical accompaniment. Now, to go back to that original uh, point, what are you doing, Trinity Apologetics? Ethan Smith, why, why, are you, why are you doing this? Why are you talking about this? Well, I've become zealous for pure worship, biblical worship. We have to bring ourselves back to the scriptures, what God has authorized for new covenant worship, instead of going and depending on Old Testament types and shadows, like incense. Right, musical instruments in the Old Testament, like incense, symbolizing the prayers of the saints. Musical instruments symbolize, you know, joy and and heartfelt worship, like we see in Ephesians five nineteen. It's they've been fulfilled, right? And of course, I, I can't go into detail in this short video, but I, hopefully, uh, you can see the other videos where I present a case, uh, a longer, more thorough case. But we see. The New Testament has a cappella, but never musical accompaniment. Isn't that curious? What has God authorized? What is pure, uh, biblical, reformed worship? Right? And I think it is beneficial to sing a cappella psalms. Extremely beneficial, and God blesses when we are uh, when we honor His worship and honor what His Word truly teaches. Thank you for watching, beloved brethren. Um, I've been doing this YouTube channel for uh, 11 plus years. Um, God has been so good and faithful. I, I sometimes receive emails about someone changing their view or changing their convictions, becoming reformed or Trinitarian. For example, just the other day, uh, the case was for a former Oneness Pentecostal. It was very encouraging to, to see that there is fruit. There is, uh, there is some difference being made out there. Even one soul makes all the difference for the glory of the Lord. So if you'd like to donate to this ministry, um, feel free. The links will be in the description. Many blessings to you. Look to Christ.